So the extra extradition law started in March yeah. in Hong Kong. So the bill was introduced by the chief executive Carrie Lam in order using the guys using the guys as like keeping the criminals in child based on one of the murder cases that happened in Taiwan the year before. And then the but then the but then there was there was only like three days of public hearing between the introduction of the bill and the first reading. And then after the first reading, a lot of legislators they went they went to protest within the legislatures, but it didn't work. So they were so the organizers were able to get people to protest before the second reading, which was in June. And then the, the protesters and then the po and then the the chief executive she called the police to crack down the protesters. And instead of backing down, people just organize and organize so that. So more than a million people came to the protest, and China was very scary, scared. So they're trying to find ways to crack, to find spies to put in within the protester to put, to put the to put the protesters down. But yeah, it hasn't been working so far, fortunately. Yes. So people from all over the world are standing uh, Hong Kong, in Hong Kong because Hong Kong is a vital free port that actually does actually contains a lot of the economies from. Different parts of the world. Yeah, and so uh, what is Hong Kong's relationship to China? Uh, it's an autonomous city within China. So there is a contract between Hong Kong and China, which is called a Basic Law. Say that that, that was established in 1997, which says that Hong Kong should have its own autonomous and freedom until 2046. But apparently, China is not um, buying that contract. That they have been breaking the Basic Law. And our and so people in Hong Kong are working with. People in Beijing is that the capital of China technically? Yeah. Or? So, um, the the people who are working in, in the higher position of the government. Yeah. Because they they are just public government of Beijing. So that's and then the chief executive, she's not. They are not elected directly by the Hong Kong population. They're elected by 1,200 representatives who do not represent the entire population. For sure. So it's like a representative democracy there, where you have they have their own people that they vote for as like a representative of a certain amount of people is that do you understand my question uh, so like yes. here 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 we would have uh, our two senators for Oregon and they represent their constituents which would be me because I live in Oregon and the other people in Oregon right. is it similar to that it's not it's yes and no it's different but it's similar different but similar okay but they're not directly um, elected by the people so they're the high the the head of government in Hong Kong is technically the chief executive, and by theory, like, they should be voted by everyone that gets to vote, that are eligible to vote, but in, in practice, they're not. It doesn't happen. So they don't have any accountability on to the Okay, people, so. and, and what, do you, what do you all want to see? What's the end goal? Um, the end goal is that we want to reach the five demands in, from, the, from the government. So first of all, um, we want the police to to take back, we want the extradition law to stop and cancel once and for all, mm -hmm. not just like suspension, we want it to be canceled and never come back to us. And then second, um, a lot of the police or the government official has branded the protesters as riots when they were not riots. So we want them to take the word back. And third, um, we want them to release all the protesters that have been arrested. And the fourth demand is that um, we want a we want a direct election on both the legislative council and the chief executive. Mm. So, yeah, that's fifth. Can't remember the fifth. Remember yeah, it's the, okay. Should have it's hard to remember all of those. Yeah. So the the extradition is strictly about people that are charged of criminal acts, or, and they're trying or to suspect as criminal or suspected. Acts. Well, the catch okay. is um the catch is that. The extradition act also works for China. Also works for the extradition to China. So, so if I if I commit some crime, let's say like in Taiwan again, or if I'm suspected of committing some crime again in, China, uh, in Taiwan, that then China would have the right to extradite me to, to China for trial. And in China, the judicial system works differently. You will have 
once you're accused guilty, you have to prove yourself innocent. Otherwise, you're still guilty. Uh, and that's a, that's a great tool for oppressing activists, yeah. human rights activists, or like political opponents, yeah. all kind of stuff like that. Perfect. Anything else you could think of that you'd want to know? Um, please contact the, your state representatives to give pressure to China. Like Perfect. such as um, if China is actually suppressing Hong Kong, like have the state to um, pass down bills that would sanction Hong Kong, because then there's a lot of laundering money in Hong Kong, and Chinese officials do not want to see the money evaporated. Yeah. In Hong Kong. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And um, 1949, uh, China came into Tibet and overthrew the Spanish government and basically settled, made Tibet part of China. Uh, since 1949, there have been protests in the capital city of Tibet, Pasa, in 1959, uh, around 1989, and the most, the biggest one was in 2008, before the Beijing Olympics. Uh, basically, these Tibetans are protesting because of their uh, Tibetan Buddhism is very controlled by the Chinese government and the Tibetan language is slowly becoming um, slowly becoming the second language for Tibetans and Chinese is becoming the first language mm -hmm. so it's basically trying to eradicate the Tibetan identity in a way um, since 2008 there's been a new type of protest um, called self emulations so Tibetans across uh, China, uh, mainly in uh, Qinghai province and Sichuan province, have been. Uh, those were there's certain parts of the Qinghai and Sichuan were parts of Tibet before, but China has incorporated into Qinghai and Sichuan. Uh, those Tibetans have been setting their bodies on fire um, due to uh, cultural cultural uh, extermination as well as uh, land seizures from the nomadic tribes as well as uh, religious restrictions so that's currently the situation in Tibet there's a lot of Thai control um, to, to be a Tibetan uh, there's also there's a plenty of there's a certain books there's books online Voices from Tibet. There's another book called Tibet on Fire. Uh, those two books were written by by by, uh, by Tibetan in Tibet who's, who was sent sent to prison. And it's very restricted. She has very restricted uh, travel travels yeah. around China. And was it because of her the, protesting? Uh, or yeah, because her of religion? Blogging, her blogging and uh, her, her, her books mm -hmm. that were very, um, basically very uh, controversial yeah. in China. What, do you, what would you, is there a, a specific religion that is suppressed in Tibet from China? Uh, one of the main ones is the portrait of the Dalai Lama. He's, um, he's, the, he's the figurehead of, apparently of Tibet the Tibetan religious uh, sect um, and uh, I know he's, he's also advocated a lot of religious harmony around the world and also uh, secular ethics yeah and um, currently his he's, a, he's branded as a uh, bad person in China and Tibetans aren't allowed to uh, show support for him in Tibet yeah and do you, would you say that the the suppression from the Chinese government, right? Is is they're using Buddhism as as a way? Is it, is it kind of like a Buddhist religion intertwined with the government is saying no to other religions or 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 sect or non non secular religions? Is that kind of the feel, or does Buddhism not really have anything to do with the problems? It's just very constrict, con controlled Buddhism. Right. Uh, Buddhism. Not actual Buddhism, but they're saying yeah. they're Buddhist and using that as a way to say we don't want other religions, in a sense. 
Um, I, I can't remember everything. Yeah, in a way, like, yeah, they've they've done they've done a lot of things to tamper in the Tibetan Buddhism yeah, so tradition. Sure. Like they appointed their own uh, reincarnation, so it's, they're they're controlling it. I think that's that's what I'm trying. To, I don't know if that's yeah, government control yeah. of the religion. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Anything else you want to say? Um, again, uh, over 150 Tibetans have set themselves on fire. Um, about 90, I'm, I'm going to give a percentage, about 90, I think 95% of it happened in Tibet. By just, it was from monks, uh, nomad, nomads, like yak herders, and like people that live in the farmland, grasslands, and also uh, teachers, a lot of, there's a lot of normal Tibetan citizens along with, and also monks have set their bodies on fire since uh, 2008, after the protests against, after the, 2000, big, the big 2008 protests. Yeah.